Okay, good evening, everybody. Please uh, let me welcome Xiang uh, Piao, um, who is a um, head of the department, head of the uh, Master Institute in Hawaii. And uh, before I give him the space to his call, which is very interesting, I hope for you all, I will just introduce him a little bit. So, welcome to this. 193rd Gunnerian Seminar, which is held today at the University of Pardubice. Today, we have the honor to welcome Jiang Piao. He started his studies in the Department of Sociology at the Beijing University, and then he moved to Britain, studied social anthropology at the University of Oxford, where he followed to work since 2004. In 2021, he became the new head of the Department of Anthropology of Economic Experimentation at the Max Planck Institute for Ethnological Research. His major work focuses on various types of migration, internal and international, unskilled and highly skilled, emigration, left behind and return. His research fields include China, India, Australia and beyond. Instead of taking migration as a distinct phenomenon to be explained, he sees migration as a particular means of social change that reveals larger forces at work. Through the lens of migration, he has examined the changing Chinese state, labor relations in the high tech sector in India, and other political economy issues in Asia. Currently, Xiang is trying to understand why commercial recruiting and, uh, intermediaries have become so prominent in unskilled labor migration in East Asia, given that modern institutions and technologies are supposed to be disempowering and disintermediating. He is also developing an interest in transnational reproduction and ethnic relations in China. In the first case, he looks into what does it mean when an inter increasing number of national nations have to rely on foreigners to reproduce themselves demographically and socially, and more people cross borders to nurture life, for instance, as caregivers, patients, and students. In the latter case, how to intern, how do internal and international migration affect the two pillars of the Chinese ethnicity, ethnicity policy? Clear demarcation of autonomous regions and categorical division between domestic and foreign affairs. He is an author to many well received publications, which has been translated into Japanese, French, Korean, Spanish, German, and Italian. The book Global Body Shopping An Indian Labor System in the Information Technology Industry, published by Princeton University in 2007, won the Anthony Leeds Prize. It's a book. Uh, then translated into by Braille uh, as Transcending Boundaries in 2005. And uh, his study, uh, Predatory Prince, uh, Princes and Princely Peddlers, in 2012, won, uh, won the William Holland Prize the same year. With Brenda Yo and Mika Toyota, he co edited a 2013 monograph called Return. Nationalizing Transnational Mobility in Asia. The most recent book, which in, is now available open access online, is Self as Method, Thinking Through China and the World, co-authored with Wu Qi. A part of what was mentioned, Xiang Piao is an author to over 40 studies and nine chapters in monographs, followed by many interviews, blog posts, and etc. etc. Despite of his major work on migration today, we will listen to a lecture which is focused a bit more theoretically and methodologically, I suppose. It is called Kant Concerns Anthropology. It is an experimental approach that identifies research questions not according to gaps in academic knowledge, but through understanding the concerns that people are grappling with in their everyday lives. The concerns include uncertainty, ex excessive competition, increasing pressure, and feelings of powerlessness. The concerns that reflect people's subject experience of objective experience of objective social contradictions. As immediate 
unarticulated perception of concerns demand new language and method through to analyze them. Welcome, Pian, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Adam. Yeah. I'm, uh, it, uh, I'm, I really feel honored to be here, and this is my first time to visit uh, the Czech Republic. It means a great deal for me to be here in this moment of time. Uh, because we know of uh, the Czech Republic primarily through some leading intellectuals, Ilan Kundera and uh, Havel, etc. They are very important for us in the 1980s when I grew up. And I mean, later on, I also became a little critical of uh, like having this uh, humanitarian liberal ideology. But nevertheless, at that time, in 1980s and even 1990s, that there was a, uh, a force for hope. You feel it is a light, it gives you strength. That was 40 years ago. But then we look at China now. What is happening? After the 40 years struggle for the more prosperous and the more decent environment, suddenly things completely change almost. So for a person like me who grew up uh, in the 1980s and 1990s, I was born in the 1970s, but the 80s and the 90s uh, were the most uh, formative period in my life. And for a person like me who are educated and follow the situation very closely to observe how historical trend of a country as big as China could turn 180 degrees suddenly like this. There's a profound sense of disorientation, I must admit, in my mind. You just feel that the storm the storm of history is so overwhelming, so bewildering, and so massive. And individual lives are literally like the autumn leaves. This is my very versatile feeling of living through this time. You cannot explain why that happens, but what happens immediately affects your existence affect how you feel about yourself, your friends, and your being. Of course, I'm lucky I'm far away from China, physically, but so many people, young people, uh, their social media accounts are constantly blocked. I mean, constantly, not the main one person. Some people, you know, they repeatedly, they can register again and again, but cannot be too many times because the system, by the way. And the silence and the, the, the it's not the anger, it's a sense of uh, you know, throw into darkness. So, uh, this is the moment that we are living in. I think Europe is pretty dark too, but probably not as dramatic as uh, China is experiencing. I think Czech, the Czech Republic is probably a lot. A society in Europe today. I can imagine people in the UK are also feel quite disorientated, and not again to the same extent as the Chinese young people feel. And the US is equally disorienting and confusing. So I'm thinking myself as a person who, who you know, have the, the read quite a bit and thought a lot. Uh, uh, still feel like a leaf being completely you know, blown away by the storm of history. So the, the, the question I really struggle with is how can a small person live through big times, live through a time that is dominated by this dramatic big shift? How a small person, ordinary person, you don't have any, you don't have a much to say, and you even don't know what happened. You cannot explain why all the change. How can you live a life that is meaningful to yourself, an ethical, in that situation? So that is, actually, now I'm looking back at my past work, 
the, in a way, it's tried to address this question, how small person live a meaningful life in a big ship, including migration, etc. Uh, what happened now in the world, and especially China, does kind of shake my face in certain anthropological uh, doctrines, and also shake my face in uh, rationality and the, the explanatory power that the social science promised to deliver. Why? Because very important things are simply can simply, simply cannot be explained, especially by ordinary. I cannot explain what why 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 was it how this thing could happen in China. We don't have basic access to the information. And so what people well, then I mean anthropology, very important. Uh, virtue of anthropology has been to explain to people that what appear to be bizarre, what appear to be imprehensible, has its own rationality, has its own good reason to be there. Now I doubt the value of such a virtue. It is understandable for former colonial power, cultural superior, white people, driven by a sense of guilt, and say, oh, you know, this what appear to be brutality among the tribal society actually have a good reason for themselves. I mean, we are have no place to judge them. How dare we? We are going to learn, etc. Uh, as a part, I mean, this is, you know, you know, the, the, Hannah Arendt has been written about it. the very important consequence of modernity is the suspense of judgment. Do not dare to judge. Of course, among all social sciences, anthropology is the most anti judgment intellectual labor. The whole business is to say we can't judge. Whatever happened, must have a good reason, but the condition is that whatever happened to you in the marginal remote society must have a good reason for yourself. I respect you. But of course, very few anthropologists can say that to their own society. They would not dare to say whatever happened in the US among the Trump supporters. Must have a good reason. It should be, should be fully supported. They are respected. And anthropologists say the far right in Europe should be fully respected. But anything bizarre, strange happened in the marginal society must have. Anyway, so that is. Uh, 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 I might have kind of a doubt, but it's a very, very uh, early stage. So I'm very much want to hear your view as well. So now the real question is, what can we ordinary people do in this dark day? I think we can do two things, and possibly two things only. The first thing to do is precisely to judge, to judge. Why? Because as ordinary people, we just simply do not know. We can, we don't have enough material. We don't have enough data and evidence to make a so-called rational analysis. The black box, the history, historical storms are beyond our rational thinking. Then as a small person, as a lead, being blown in the middle of a storm, the only thing you can do is to judge. Make an ethical assessment. Is this good or bad? This again me, because I was influenced by an abundant, and she said in this calculation, you ask what is a greater evil and a lesser evil is a wrong way to ask a question. That is a kind of calculation we in measuring 
For ordinary people, you have to say, is this acceptable or not? So strong in a way. This is how you as a small people live through big time. And then it's I was also influenced by you know, as I believe is a debate with uh, I think Edward Carr about how to explain the Soviet his, the success of the Soviet. And then in the early stage, I, I was very puzzled by, as I believe, the position. I, believe I was very supportive of a part of the position. And the part of the position was that there's a basic fact that the Soviets succeed. So therefore, the business of the intellectual is to, is to explain why such a thing happened. Because that's the basic fact. So our job is to tell the world why certain things come into being. And then, you know, we have to correct lots of our misunderstanding and uh, assumption about the Russian culture or about the history. So we're looking to why something you thought should not succeed, but actually succeed. I mean, it sounds like a very attractive intellectual project. But Berlin said no. Berlin's position puzzled me. And he said, number one, we don't know. We can, whether or not we can explain why the Soviet succeeded is beyond our rational capacity because there are too many contingencies. And then he said, okay, now that's true. We have to face the basic reality that Soviet succeeded. What should be our response? The response is ethical assessment. It's not an empirical explanation because empirical explanation in his view is impossible number one number two is also politically dubious in terms of consequence <laughs> what is important to do is to say okay this fact happened then what it means to people including means to me just as a private individuals make ethical assessment and it took me quite a while to to to, to appreciate this position i mean this has something to do with age <laughs> I don't know what I mean, but probably you, know, you also feel like this old middle aged man being mm -hmm. In the future, you can think about I mean, when you are young, you believe in rationality, you believe in understanding. I mean, you're very young, probably you rush to judgment. Then you think, oh, you know, oh, it's, it's a teenager as a passion, it's a, I'm not very mature, so now I'm intellectually mature, so I will look at all the facts and details, have a nuanced understanding. But when I'm getting older, then I discard that. The nuance of understanding probably is never possible. It will never be complete. And especially in the middle of this thought, the important thing is to judge. Then you come to a question, judge. Judgment is dangerous too, because it can rush to a very simplistic and the white and the black right, verdict about the history. And it's like a composition. So then you lose all the analytical power. You cannot deepen our understanding about how things happen and especially how specifically you should act, you should think, right? So judgment does have the risk of blocking further thinking. Judgment does have the tendency to black box all the details and also put yourself position in a very dogmatic way rather than thinking in a more active way, thinking more specific. Right? Because the, 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 of course, the storm of history is very powerful, overwhelming. But every day, how things that happens, every day, your friends, your colleagues who are influenced by that talk to you on very specific issues. And at that moment, how you should act, what you should think. That cannot be uh, uh, resolved through a, just a blanket judgment, what is the good of that? So you need to be more specific. We do need uh, to ground judgment into specific experiences and observations and analysis. So analysis is still important to me. So I wanted to uh, promote a type of judgment that is based on analysis rather than based on pre or principles. So how to analyze? I just said, ordinary people we don't have enough material to understand what's going on very often. So 
So what do we know for sure in this situation? Personally, I feel the only thing we know for sure is our own feeling, our own experiences, our anger, confusion, disgust, and the worry. This is the only thing we know for sure. Of course, I mean, for phenomenologists, this is also their starting point. Uh, that's an entire philosophical thinking. I mean, we don't know the world as it is. What we know is how we conceive the world, how the world looks to us. So, so the image of the world in our feeling it should be the start. And actually, I'm doing that to myself. I'm thinking, OK, why well, I'm so disturbed by a particular event, then I look at it, I observe. I analyze, not the event, but I analyze and observe my own feeling, my own response. And I think why I'm so disturb disturbed by that. And why I'm so disturbed by this particular event, why I'm less disturbed by some event which is arguably much worse if you make a, a moral or legal judgment. And what it is about, right? And uh, so, and how my a friend and you know, social media talk about these things. And from there, you will see how our certain uh, moral sensitivities our, uh, is, is like, and uh, how our past experiences shape our perception of the current situation. And why do we do this? I think by analyzing our own feelings and the responses. And then, of course, we trace back to life experiences, also trace back to the particular event as they appear to us. We don't know what is the causes of the event, but we know what it looks like to, to other people. We probably can develop uh, uh, some languages, uh, uh, some practical ways to uh, live through and to face this situation in the future, rather than being overwhelmed by it, and will also develop the language and the specific way of thinking that will enable us to come up with good judgment. It still go back to the question of, the, of judgment. So that is, you look at your feeling and then how people respond is a part of what I call common concerns, common concerns. And uh, I just give you one quick example. Uh, it's, 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 it's not a pre-designed research program. It's really a response to what's going on now. Uh, the COVID lockdown in Shanghai. And I, of course, I mean, it's a very disturbing. You know, the situation is very disturbing and also very mysterious. I don't understand why the situation can be so wrong. I mean, Shanghai, given the technology and it's the best governed city, not only in China, I think it's probably one of the best governed city in the world. If you look at the efficiency and the G5, uh, um, uh, the how widespread the, uh, the G, G5 technology is and, uh, and the grassroots uh, organization, uh, it, it, it was very attractive to many people over the last two, three or four decades. And how could it end up a situation where the people uh, were starving and the people were, uh, that who need the emergency medical care were turned away simply because they could not produce a negative COVID test on time and some people died as a result of that. Uh, so that was a disturbing. I was trying to do some kind of research, of course, based on the, 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 the secondary documentary research about that. But, but then when I was doing that, I just found out it's impossible for me to, to explain why this happened. It just has no enough information. There's no enough information. And also that could be the, uh, 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 the fact is that the situation becomes so complicated because of all the technologies and the political calculation and uh, uh, the, the, the certain commercial interests involved. We don't know. We don't know. 
But then, what the more I read, read the material, the one thing become clearer and clearer to me is that the sense of absurdity, absurdity really standing out from the people's experiences. Hmm? For the people, the residents in Shanghai went through all that. The problem is not only that they lost the freedom of living everyday life, even carrying out as a life as a social. It's not only because they are feel hungry, and it's not only because they, I mean, there's a kind of breakdown of public communication. Right? It's a the, the population of different opinions simply cannot talk to each other. Each other excuse the opposite uh, the other side as a, as a, as a morally inferior and it's uh, it's just an evil and etc. So it's a, it's a, it's a horrible situation. But what really the feeling in that situation? The biggest concern of that in that situation from the people's experience is a sense of absurdity. Is absurdity. It's not only you suffer, but you suffer for something that you just cannot understand the possible cause. So it's not just the oppression. It's not anything you know, the government policies are wrong, you know. But the whole process of how these policies are implemented is beyond apprehension. And you ask a question, you ask an explanation, why do you do this? Why do you have to take the entire block, sometimes summon the people to make shift, fill the hospital simply because one person is tested positive and the forced? Uh, 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 quarantine and separate the children from parents and all that. If you ask, but no answer. Ask, no answer. So this is deep, deep sense of absurdity is a key feature of, of, of this event. So then I think, okay, I mean, this is not a project, it's just a small exercise, the latest one I, I, I do. So that will give you a sense how I shift the folks from the question of why all this happened to how this feel for the people there. And you start from there, try to understand what creates this sense of absurdity. And that is what we can observe hmm? because of, you, know, you, you ask question, you know answer. And uh, uh, because the policy changes so many times, uh, and uh, because you, if you are even hungry, you are not allowed to complain. Because if you complain, you are you 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 are hungry. So you, you it be inter interpreted that you are kind of sometimes you're the running dog of American imperialism. That is how social media will attack you if you speak and you are suffering in Shanghai because I, I did not receive food on time as uh, promised by government, and then it's all be they be attacked as as uh, uh, you know, patriotic and even uh, a supporter of some evil uh, foreign uh, forces in the sector. So this we know. This we know. The, the, what creative a sense of absurdity. And then you 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 you. When we look at that, uh, then we see the 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 biggest worries, the concerns, at that moment is a sense of absurdity, is a the total loss of the trust of power, and, uh, uh, and also the breakdown of a social fabric. Absurdity also means mm -hmm. that what, what is common sense now is no longer, you cannot rely on common sense to live on your life anymore, right? Um, so that is, I, uh, so we still cannot explain why that happened, but if you understand that kind of feeling of absurdity, I'm thinking this may enable us to be one step close to the, but most acute social contradiction at that moment in people's experiences. 
So the contradiction is between the power and the people and the breakdown of communication uh, between power and the people. It's a very uh, decommunicative quality of a power. And then why that happened again is a, it's, I think, it's a, political, so it's a different type of, of research project. So this is just to give you a, a sense what I feel, what I call the common concern that anthropology uh, may be relevant for us, not as academic exercise, but as a part of life, but a part of life. And uh, today I'm talking is probably not uh, academic research at all. I want to just report to you what I have been thinking recently, which is also a kind of direction that I want uh, uh, pursue with the new department that uh, I'm setting up uh, in, in class as a part of the Max Planck Institute for Social Anthropology. The common concern of anthropology is a type of research as Adam mentioned, but we do not start with academic questions. Uh, we do not, you know, ask how important the materiality is in identity formation. Uh, this is not a concern that the people know they have. The researchers, for open reasons, are somehow triggered by this question. The people, 99 percent of people, live their life and not bothered by that. And they, but at the same time, they have lots of other problems to to work about. Um, so, and our aim is not to advance the discipline. I mean, the discipline is a tool that serve our life, and uh, we don't need to advance discipline. The discipline should uh, be nurtured in order to advance our life. Um, and then we want to start with the concern that the people have in their daily lives. Uh, the quick example is, for instance, one of our ongoing projects is on the pressure. pressure. But if you ask young people today in many parts of the world, what is a real big concern they have in life? It's not so much about poverty. Is uh, not so much about the political marginalization. I mean, they may use these terms to 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 to, to describe their concerns. And there's a most direct, versatile feeling of, of life, at least in Asia, and also in, in Africa, which is uh, this uh, the first phase of this pressure project is based on, is that the, the, the increasing pressure, the prop the property price and uh, the competition in education, job market. Uh, so it's a not, you, you, we, we can of course describe it as a kind of a precarity, uh, but the precarity is already a, um, a, a description, a third person description is a description in a distance. You say, oh, the situation is quite precarious. But the, for the young people who are in the middle of a precarity, what is they are doing? They are constantly looking for a little bit of security. They are constantly looking for the next opportunity within the precarious situation. We can see all this, I mean, uh, you know, the, the, one of the biggest problems is inequality. Very true. But for the pe for people, ordinary people, in the middle of a highly unequal system, what do they do? The main business for them is not to criticize the inequality. The main thing they are doing, what they are worried about is how can I advance within this ecosystem? How can I survive within this ecosystem? And I know one, of course I know completely this is not a justifiable system, but as a small person, my job today is to think of how to survive and how to advance. But this creates tremendous pressure. How can I constantly look for a little bit of security? How can I, you know, in, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, the, add more color on my CV? How can I do more things to develop more networks? 
and uh, on the, my social media I have more followers just to have a little more chance in the next job interview. This is what is in their heart. So to criticize the system being unequal, unjust is one thing, but to understand how this sense of pressure is created through multiple structural and institutional arrangement, and therefore to per per perpetuate this unequal system. This is probably this unequal system, the precarity and central, the carries on because so many young people under pressure are struggling very hard to survive and live all within the system, which in turn sustains the future. And then, you know, and you are very welcome to, to visit our website. We have other examples. Another project is uh, what is the first one we did along this line is suspension. I mean, it, 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 it is a started with the migrant workers. Suspension is that constantly busy, always looking for next opportunities. And uh, if you confront any problems, the first reaction is to move on. It is just a waste of time. Try to confront the problem here and then now try to solve it because it's too hard. What a smart person should do is to move on to save more money. And if you save more money, you may free yourself completely from the current situation. For instance, you will be no longer a migrant worker. You may become an entrepreneur. You have enough money, you can set up a shop. You can be boss of your own. You, you, so you don't need the, uh, to deal with all the shit in, in everyday life. So if you step on shit, run away. But of course, only very small minority of migrant workers have really graduated into the position of entrepreneur. And everyone just constantly run away, looking for next opportunities. And the problem, of course, remains and is becoming worse. But everyone is very busy because it's, over, it's, it's, it's the very charge. I mean, this explains a situation like in China. Economically, people are extremely, you can see, the full human agency. And they, they, they are then restless. But if you look at the social, it's very stagnant, which of course eventually allowed for such a, I think, a very, very oppressive authoritarian regime to come to be. There is a, there's a deep, deep social decay, breakdown of social trust. Break down the very, very basic social solidarity. Friends and classmates are not a friend, the classmates. Classmates are all rivals, competitors. That is a line that has been, been circulating in China, among Chinese people, they're self mocking. I mean, what, 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 what does it mean to, to be educated in school? It does not mean that you, you are learning anything. But all you can do is just to outperform your peers. This is the whole what education means. Just outperform your peers in whatever way. How much you learn doesn't matter because in the end of the day, the system judge you whether or not you outperform, you beat others. And uh, I mean, this kind of uh, critical analysis is coming from people themselves. And this is expressed as a concern, their anxiety, but they can't see the solution. For me, that is a wonderful, wonderful entry point to understand the social contribution. That there is something need to be addressed. Why it comes to this situation? Why people are so worried about that, yet they cannot see practical exit? What what can one do? Right. So anyway, so that's that's the 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 the, 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 the that is what I you know, one thing. The kind of suspension is that kind of, uh, of state of being. So you can say one of business uh, business businesses that we want to do in our department is this uh, critical political economy of B. Right. Of course, we want why 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 political. I mean, number one, being is that in the general sense, 
of, of resistance, like a suspension, I and mean, it cannot be reduced to one particular domain of life. Is this only about the economic, about the income poverty? Is this only about the status and the social honor? Is it about uh, uh, looking for partners, forming families, and gender uh, roles? Of course, they are all of them. For a person to live through life, it is very, very mixed. But they give you a very sharp sense of being. And then the question is, how are you going to analyze this kind of thing? It's a so you know, multifaceted, right? And it's very, very difficult to define technically. That is a challenge. That is a challenge. Uh, I know that today's time is limited, but in the future, we can also go through the major challenges of such an approach. One of the challenges is that if you move away too much from academic uh, uh, concepts, then it becomes quite difficult to establish your subject matter, right? because the, the thing that comes from life itself is very uh, uh, kind of elusive and it's, it's, it's uh, uh, amorphous, is that word? It's uh, the shapeless. Right? But if you try to, how can we give shape to that? But probably this is also opportunity for innovation. You, you force us to come up with new languages and new approaches to give shape to such concerns. So anyway, it's a being. Then how to give shape to such sense of being? Uh, uh, we want to emphasize political, political, political to understand how the basic patterns of material distributions, power relations uh, in the immediate context, the, the, in the context where people living their life, actually uh, uh, give rise to this sense of being. Right? This kind of feeling, effect, of course, you must be based on real experiences, and real experiences can be analyzed through uh, a political economy uh, angle. So that is uh, the suspension as an example of this kind of common concerns. And then we have other uh, a number of, of, of you know, feeling of the powerlessness. Uh, uh, climate change is a big topic. But if you keep talking about climate change, I don't know how we can really make contribution. And uh, it, it's not a matter of awareness is weak uh, about climate change, but why don't see any concrete actions? Uh, that is a question. And then you have to look to the real life. When people are talking about climate change, what do they mean exactly? And for example, in China, young people, I, I don't think the climate change is really a concern in their life. I mean, they, in, in the conceptual levels, they say, of course, you know, they have evidence, etc. Et but there is one individual. What can they do? And actually, but then, as you some of you know, the fertility rate in China now is declining very, very sharp. And that is a concern for young people, and especially for women, of course. Should I get married? If I get married, should I give children? No? So the birth giving is a very real question. The concern about birth giving has a lot to do, actually, with the concern about climate. Question is that why should I bring new life to the world with like this? If the world has no future, why should I give birth to new life that they will suffer? More heat waves, more disasters, and who will see no hope? And then, of course, the birth concern is not determined by the concern for climate alone. When women think, see that, immediately the parents the society will start to pressure on them. Don't be silly, you're a woman, if, you're no, if you don't become mother, you, your life is not complete, you wouldn't be happy. And then some people now also, they kind of new Macedonia is I think it's also kind of global trend, even you can see the woman hatred is in all. You're, you're, you're failing your duty, being a woman, not to give birth and not to reproduce the nation, the race, and etc. So all these things come together. But that is a real. That is what is the, the, the worry. As a young woman, I see the world in this way. I under this pressure. Then what is my perception of a possibility? That 
redefine the question. I guess I think in Europe too. If you really talk to young people about climate change, but what is really in their heart, I feel, I haven't done any research on that, is a sense of powerlessness, is a sense of despair. And this sense of powerlessness is not only related to climate change, of course it's related to their economic livelihood and the disillusion about the current liberal parliamentary democracy, which is not functioning well in many parts of the world. And the climate change added to that. So if we start probe question in this way, I don't know whether we will reach to some new understandings that actually can mobilize the popular population and at least foster dialogues in a more meaningful way, rather than and sometimes I feel we are just uh, shouting the same slogan again and again, and uh, intellectually or, or practically, we're not going somewhere. What we see is a really deep, deep divide of the society. One reason that the society becomes so divided is because each other, both parties feel the other side is hijacked by some in a very abstract notion, they are not authentic, they are not really understanding reality, right? But if everyone can really address the, the, the concerns in their life, I think the communication will become easier. Yeah. Now, in this regard, I don't have direct evidence or example to, to demonstrate this hypothesis, but I always feel that so much debate is becoming quite abstract. It has, this has something to do with social media. Uh, abstract, not necessarily you know, theoretically become more philosophical, but abstract the sense of things that many things are packaged into kind of a slogan shouting mode. Hmm? You have to save the earth, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but how and why and how that they affect you now, that kind of question is, 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 is not addressed. And so therefore this kind of question become just a moral statement, moral statement. We call the moral statement in the means that you will have to support it as a moral being, regardless how that problem related to your real existence, your very concrete mode of being. Uh, so common concern is try to 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 foreground that, and um, uh, so basically that's what we want to do, and uh, then it's nothing new. I mean that's. Uh, in, 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 you can say in all classical social sciences actually address common concerns. And why Marx Weber is so important? I mean, it's not because he explained capitalism, but he, uh, he, he, in a way, he explained capitalism in a particular way. He said, you know, the, 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 like West Europe had the capitalism is not because people want to make money, almost the opposite. People work very hard, not to make money, not to enjoy life, but because they regard it as a calling, uh, as a duty uh, to the God, right? So, uh, the, 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 and the, the, that touched on the questions, why, why, why people work hard? What is a decent person in this society? Right? And then he demonstrated that has a huge structural consequences. And which is the rise of capitalism. And uh, the, the, the Marx writing by the powerful really give a sense of empowerment to the people of lose their land, lost land in the countryside and came to factory, become nobody, and uh, uh, this deep sense of, of alienation as a labor. Uh, and then the, 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 the theoretical argument have a life because it's all addressed, the condition of being of the people at that moment. And in the door comes the same, this, like a Moors in the door, because of war, question of how cool uh, uh, European civilization come to this stage, break down of basic solidarity. Uh, so I mean, there, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, uh, 
I put that, I think it's something new and it's the opposite, just to, to repeat what has been done before. But somehow, I just don't feel that the, the tradition was a bit lost, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I know very little about this so intellectual history and common. And, I, and I, it's also the more directly influenced by uh, John Dewey, this, this uh, kind of uh, American philosopher who really promote philosophy for you. The philosophy is not business of just to, how to describe the world. But you describe the world in a way that individuals see themselves in it. And you're describing the way that the individual know how he or she should respond and act in that world. So theory is all about giving you a picture, a vision that defines your action, that you lead. And in the front of the school, uh, we start a human, and what is a human? We start a human, basically, is a creator of their own history. So, so you don't describe what a culture is or what the, what the human, how human behave, and etc. to find the laws or patterns. I mean, for from the school, that is a completely fake studio science, it's bourgeois science. You reify, reify life, reify human. Human live life to create their own destiny, to create their own life. It's a full of struggle. And the theory is to capture how they create, how they struggle. So therefore the concern, of course, for me, seems a very logically essential question. When people struggle in the middle of the struggle, what the concern them most? So that there can be a point of entry to discover more how, how they created the virus, what the problems they face and how they deal with that. Uh, uh, I was also influenced by Mao and and uh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, Mao, we don't probably indirectly, but also influenced by John Dewey in some way. It's, it's a, a science for him, it's, it's never a, 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 a distance of description. And, uh, and the, the question is what is accurate? What is accuracy? Is accuracy just a, a indicator, the closeness? between the description and the reality. Or accuracy is actually indicate how sharply you capture potential. You, you capture what is not there yet, right? You, 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 you capture the, the contradiction and dynamics which is invisible. For my thinking, accuracy means this. If it's just a descriptive accuracy, that means mechanical repetition. That is a photograph, not an art. Uh, I mean, even photograph, the really powerful photograph is always telling you something you don't see in the photograph itself. Why photograph is more powerful than we will see the things that we have Because by capture that moment, Actually, they allow for some potential to emerge to the surface even more powerful. So it's always about capture. Something is not there, there yet. So, I mean, this is another state of contradiction. Why contradiction is so important because of the contradiction emerging from uh, the current the situation, then we lead the current the situation to the next step. So the business is never to describe what the current situation is, but the business is always to capture the contradiction existing inside of the current situation that will lead to next. Uh, uh, so all this, is, this why common concern important is a kind of point of entry for us to discover uh, uh, that kind of dynamics and the potentials uh, in, in life. Uh, so probably I, will, I mean this is really a report about the on the action plan. It's not an academic uh, project. It's an action plan of the department. So we want to you know, identify this this uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the starting point and then develop. I mean, of course, we have to give quite uh, precise, uh, conventionally defined, I mean, accurate ethnographic uh, rendering of what this concerns this feels like and what it is about, and try to develop a political economy analysis of these concerns. Uh, then, in the end of the day, we wanted to uh, provide languages, sometimes images, and we also work with artists uh, that uh, uh, basically will provide some tools that uh, young people uh, can use to understand their life. Uh, this, of course, I mean, we don't have time to go into, but I think that is also a response to the 21st century condition of social inquiry. Rapid rising education level. Many people in business, in, 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 in industry, in civil servants, social workers, and their interest in social theories and their ability of reading social theories, in my view, is very close to professional academics. Nowadays, I mean, this is probably especially so in Europe and in Asia. I mean, I have experience, direct experience of interacting with uh, young people in, in China, very direct. Eh? It's a, I mean, the hunger for, for, for ideas, hunger for new language to understand why the situation is like this. Life will become life. What should I do? Right? It's, it's very, very acute. Very, very acute. So I don't quite understand. Uh, uh, I mean, if you if we say things that resonate with the experiences, if we say things that address their concerns, I mean, they, 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 they really cherish it. I was very, very encouraging by that. I mean, they don't ask for full explanation. They do not ask for solution because they are sophisticated enough to know that there's a, no such thing as a solution for all the life problems. They just need some descriptions, some summaries, some concept or framework and a perspective as a tool for them to, to think. They said, okay, you know, to think through some, some, some uh, the problems they face. And then uh, yeah, I received all the responses as many says they have a kind of therapeutic effect, make them calmer, Make them just uh, the, the, the mind less cluttered because so many things. And if, if we give them certain kind of vision picture, they feel it clarified. They feel it clarified something in the mind. That is already, uh, they, they, they appreciate. But the question, the onus is on our side. Are we courageous enough as professional architects to recognize that such a demand in society? And they try to meet this demand. Very, very difficult. The department, I mean, this is uh, because I'm new, as Adam said, you know, I mean, they try to set up. I mean, this may be fake in five years' time. And the people say, What are you doing? I mean, you're non academic, you don't publish in the American journals, you don't engage with this and that, uh, the latest the series, you know nothing about the literature, and you do all these public writings, and it's not serious. I mean, that can be easily disappointed. I wouldn't be surprised. So it does. Uh, but I, I guess this is why I'm, I want to do because I feel that it is something worth failing. It's worth failing, and it's likely to fail. And uh, but if uh, it, it failed, I feel yeah. I ask my question myself. I mean, it's a hard thing to do. I ask my question myself that question. If it failed, whether or not I will uh, be still be happy. Right, and whether or not I will have a count, a narrative for myself uh, to, to explain to myself about the failure. I feel I can <laughs> in five ten years time. If you see the department is no longer exists or so doing something, something completely different, uh, or you want to find me where I am, but don't worry, I have a count for myself. And, uh, 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 and the, the reason that gives me that kind of confidence to fail is because I do see there is a demand. Uh, 
um, in the 21st century is very, very different from 19th century and 20th century, uh, under which social science was taught. At that time, the gap between the educated academics and the public is so huge. The vast majority of people are still illiterate. And at that time, bureaucracy is such a machinery that if you get some policy right, you can solve the problems. But today, if you don't have a massive mobilization of people to change the lifestyle, to change the basic understanding, of what the good life means, etc. I can't imagine how we can solve a problem like climate change or aging or education. This is all go down to the level. How the parents understand what good life means, what it is, you know, a, 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 a respect in the kind of they want and how we treat you know, parents, etc. And that's it. That, that, that's it. And also with social media, social media. It is just uh, quite hard to understand why journal articles uh, have such a prestige. <laughs> and uh, everything is now quantified. Uh, uh, the, the journal articles that are read by 200 people somehow rank so much higher than the article that influence 20,000 people's lives. Uh, so I, uh, I mean, this is something I can't, I mean, I don't understand, but I mean, it cannot be changed by one bit of the government. This is the mood of race in Germany. Uh, but, uh, uh, but this is, 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 a, is a little hard. So anyway, so I report to you and uh, want to hear your view. And I also hope that uh, to gain uh, support from you, because we do need a support in the coming years to, to try this out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for, I think, definitely very inspiring uh, talk. And uh, now I would like to open the discussion and uh, just to make it organized a little bit more. Can I ask maybe Tom to make a talk? to lead the discussion here and I will be prepared by the uh, by the computer to check the discussion if there are any questions mm -hmm. from those who are online and I don't uh, want to forget also for those who are online and didn't have the chance to meet Bia today in person uh, there will be an opportunity on Friday this Friday in Prague Cafe Campus uh, near to Betlemske Namnesi there is an pos a possibility to, to meet in the afternoon around 4 or uh, around 4 p.m. I think uh, we said uh, if you have any uh, question about that more precise please Adam uh, please uh, email to me adam.horalek at upce.cz and we will send you the location and time. So if you have uh, uh, time and you want to talk about this topic or other topic with Pia, so please uh, just join us on Friday. And now, please, I open the uh, space for questions and discussion. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were the raised question. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> is to run the question. So, so far there is no question oh. online. Yeah. I don't know what what will be the methods of common concerns anthropology like mm -hmm. to like untie this knot uh, of yeah. confusion. Yeah, yeah, no. So that's a, that's a great question because this is all what we are going to do, right? We practically how we going to do that. And the number one challenge is that how do we identify what uh, the common concerns are really? And then you know you have to identify something is not uh, we imagine is that people really feel right? This is number one. Number two, we have to identify. I mean, then people have so many concerns, but we have to have to identify a kind of strategic concerns. But this is the kind of intellectual work because for people in everyday life, uh, the concern. Uh, varies from one moment to another, right? But we have to find a concern that is a strategic, meaning it kind of define uh, the basic mode of being. 
And this concern will, 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 will bring many other issues together. Uh, so therefore, once we arrange, uh, address that, we will be address large part of life and then we'll give clarity to, to people. Um, so how to do that? And I feel that so-called co-research is very important. I mean, it's kind of now become cliche, but I think we, I have not seen very uh, uh, deep practice of that. Co-research is that you, 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 you do the research together with your, your, your informants, and then you start from them what they are really want to do more and what they need, right? And then, of course, you, 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 you translate into certain intellectual question, and then you, you, you have a, a certain hypothesis or observation, you get back and listen to them, what do they say? And this is what I did with the two projects, suspension and uh, evolution. The term suspension uh, is, uh, uh, and it, it kind of the, my, my invention, and uh, uh, to describe the situation, how the migrant workers are you know, constantly changing jobs. And I didn't understand why they change jobs so often, which is really against their own economic interest. But then I discovered they had to change the job because in the factories, once they have a little problems, there's no mechanism for them to solve the problem. For example, if they quarrel with the fellow workers, if they have a little problem with the, the dorm mates, the person who shares the, the, the dormitory rooms, the only way for them to solve the problem is to change job, to, sh to, to jump ship to another factory. And that has something to do with the specific some people call it a dormitory regime because in China, all factories have their own dormitories. And the dormitories are often understood as a tool for controlling workers because you will live in the factory for 24 hours. But ironically, dormitory also enable the hypermobility because you don't need to worry about looking for another rental or accommodation. And once you've got a job, you'll be given a bed in the, in the dormitory. So that the kind of constantly, you have hyper mobile working life, but the, in the factory, you don't have any social space for negotiation, for develop a solidarity and etc. Right? So this is the kind of, uh, so that was in 1994. So immediately I got the image in my mind is that all oh, these people are like hummingbird. You know, the bird with very small wings in order to stay in air, the birds have to flap their wings very, very fast. So these people like a hummingbird, just jump, fly from one place to another, just to stay still in the air. And it's very tiring. And the life is empty. The, 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 anything they do at this moment is empty. But they work hard, very hard, in order to achieve somehow imagined future. They, were, they thought that they will have a quantum leap into the future that become the entrepreneur somehow. Right. And, and that is the, the, my observe, I observe. And then uh, I, I kind of describe this in social media, working with journalists, and, and, and then you, you, you became a, a, a buzzword in social media. Then I collect what uh, they say, and then it helped me to think more. What is the condition uh, that, uh, that will create this situation? Situation of suspension and what's the feeling is an like a suspension. This is, is, is that, yeah, then uh, the, the latest the trial is actually going very well, in, if, as, I, as far as I, I feel, is uh, the nearby. I probably a couple of words I want to promote this project to promote it to invite you to, to join our project. It's called the nearby. The nearby is your surrounding. And so that is not an academic project. It is a social art project, uh, meaning we want to develop a kind of set of toolkits uh, that people can use uh, to observe, to become more aware of their surroundings. So why is that significant? You look at the young people. What is their mind? What kind of thing occupies their mind? Two things. One, very far global planetary crisis, 
refugee crisis, climate change, and the big geopolitical shift. And often presented in a quite abstract, monolithic language. Second thing occupied them is the self. How can I get better scores? What job I should apply? And my relations and the, 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 you know, it's again, it's very sensitive. It's a, oh, very emotionally charged. And the middle is that completely uh, This is particularly so in, in, in East Asia, in China. Who is cleaning your street? How is your community organized? Uh, your, 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 your wet market, the food market, who is selling the vegetable? Your security guard, who are they and where their family lives? What is their biggest concern? What's their dreams? Complete empty. And then in this situation, the perception of the world is, on one hand, very moralistic, a big judgment of the planet, etc. And then it's a very emotional child, self. This, in my view, created lots of you know, social polarization in debate and also lost the basic social intelligence in understanding social problems because you don't see the social as, as a concrete, very concrete shape of social problem. You don't see how differences are being negotiated, how people have different views and you learn how to negotiate through, across differences, etc. So nearby is to, 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 to encourage them, uh, to, 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 we, we try to develop some kind of game uh, as a young people to observe a familiar stranger, like the person who sells vegetable in front of your condominium. And, I mean, you see him uh, every day, four o'clock to six o'clock afternoon. Of course, you never talk to that person. Now observe, yes. What kind of background that person can have? What is the biggest dream? And, uh, and then you go home, talk to your friends or parents, other them to guess too. And then you create a topic for people to talk to each other about the, the capacity to imagine another person, develop a sense of empathy and a social intelligence. And then you say, oh, under the lockdown, how does that person work? A person whose livelihood is completely rely on people moving around to buy vegetables in the afternoon. Completely unpredictable, but a very precarious situation. What, 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 what does the city looks like? What the, all the buildings I'm living in looks like for the person who are not allowed to enter the condominium. Uh, uh, the, the, that kind of a bit, little like exercise and a very low key. And again, oh, what is the theoretical, no, zero, zero theoretical significance. Uh, uh, but we are now doing, uh, uh, the, the way we do it is that we, we run a social art workshop three months long in person. And then followed by two months of online discussion, and we want to do exhibition among people from literally all backgrounds. That you know, unemployed and uh, civil servants who quit their jobs, and uh, bankers, and uh, the recent graduates. They come together. They do their kind of art project. But art is 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 a they're called social art. Is is like you, you you interview a person and you 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 have a certain image or film and to present that kind of, of of nearby and how you 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 know you, uh, yeah that I I, I can't, I'm not I'm not able to summarize all their works and about forty people nearly forty people from that. So so then in that process I learned a lot about how these young people perceive their own life. Uh, how they see their, their, their surrounding, and then the, the notion of the nearby now, I think they picked up very widely in social media. Again, go back to the question, in such a dark time, in a, such a historical storm, I a little leave. What should do? Why don't we look around our immediate surrounding? You find the decency of the people who are close to you, cherish them. Nurture that. Try gain, try to gain strength from that. I don't know whether or not it makes sense to me, but this in in, in, in a situation, uh, 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 well, I think in the nineteen sixty eight to make sense. I mean, after the the the, the, the spring come to end, uh, in, in here in, in, in Czech and probably uh, uh, yeah before uh, during that time 
until 1989 probably makes sense. And even today also makes sense because this the power of the corporate, the power is, is also equally oppressive. Right. Yeah, anyway, so 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 I mean this is the, I mean whether or not it can really travel and is very specific to the, the society. And if you want to really accurately capture the people, the worry, the worry is kind of specific. But at the same time, I also feel yeah, if it can resonate across context, we don't know yet. This we have to observe. Sorry, very long answer, but this is something like this. Is Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I had a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas when you were talking about uh, uh, all the things. What I probably want to ask first is like, because you were talking about the pressure. I was thinking a lot during uh, your talk because you then mentioned that you were also looking in powerlessness because that was first word which appeared to me when you said that you look on the pressure that people mostly feel pressure. But I was thinking maybe is the was the, the the cause of the pressure which might be in the powerlessness and uh, maybe it's undescribed powerlessness. So I was just thinking, and in the terms of uh, intentionalist approach, is that, that there are many in many many feelings, many many ideas, many many uh, intentions uh, for something, but. Uh, in terms of Max Weber's free, uh, there are always the free, unavoidable biases of our research, including the choosing the topic of the research or the choosing the, the one thing. So is there any idea how to, uh, have you already thought how to research the most important common concern? in a term you know like whether it's pressure because then when you were talking i was just thinking of other feelings like being pressed being stressed being lonely because also the web of uh, social interaction is uh, disconnected in a way especially in uh, so loneliness so uh, powerlessness so how to choose from all these words though the one to study or no, that's uh, again, you know, I don't have a, a very good answer for that. Probably for another five or six years, we have to do it first and see mm -hmm. uh, what uh, 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 be a feasible and productive way to address that. But there's a couple of comments I can make now, which is very hypothetical. Number one is more technical, is that, for example, loneliness probably. Is I feel it probably is not a very good uh, loneliness or stress, maybe not a very good uh, topic, because it's a very much a psychological stage. Um, and uh, a concern is more, I mean, they certainly have very strong psychological and emotional dimension by the concern. But it is a kind of subjective perception of objective condition. So, for example, a, a, a stress, it, it does not really uh, point to any a particular uh, objective condition because people can get uh, the psychological state, uh, what we call a stress in many contexts, right? So then uh, I think that is probably more a psychologist's uh, uh, domain. So they will try to find out, okay, regardless of uh, the context, when people get stressed, they will have this, 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 and uh, uh, problem in behavior, and then probably can intervene this way. Uh, loneliness is similar. Um, so the, 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 and then the, the example pressure is a little different because the pressure is not a, maybe not a psychological uh, a state alone. Pressure uh, means uh, uh, you want to perform as a society demand, but in a way that you are not fully convinced, but yet you don't see any exceed. Right? And then you, you, you cannot say, um, you have to find a job as a man. If you don't have a proper job, you are not a true man. Then you, you try hard to find a job, but you are unhappy to do that. 
And uh, you don't, you're not fully convinced by this doctrine to say, you know, any decent man must have a job. But yet, you don't have a language to argue against it. And, uh, and you still want to be a decent man. You still want to command the respect within this system. And, uh, uh, but you're not happy. But yet, you can't argue against it. So, I mean, this is, it's a very sketchy, but, but it's, it's a kind of, it's not a, a like, a, it's very different from stress. Very different. Uh, like suspension, same. Suspension, the idea of suspension. Uh, is you uh, hanging in the air like uh, this uh, hummingbird. It, 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 you, you don't want to give up hope. You think you, you try hard, you, you one day you may jump to become a little or something, or at least a, a little boss. But you're also very much driven by fear. Because once you stop, the hummingbird will drop straight away I mean, to the ground. And uh, so, so, so it's not, not but yet you are unhappy, you feel very tired. And you don't know why you are doing that. But you don't know what, how you can stop. So it's, it, 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 it has the kind of perception, understanding, a kind of unarticulated critique or resentment, right? all come together. I think the concern is more like that kind of perception. So the subjective. Uh, uh, yeah, perception of, of objective condition. I mean, this, th these two things must come together. So it's, a, it's not a purely a subjective feeling. So that's, that's the number. Number two, there's still there's so many you know, subjective experiences of objective conditions. I mean, how we you know, decide which one to, to work. Sometimes I think this, you can say, if you know the people well enough, of course you know the main concerns. I mean, if you are, if you are reasonably close to your parents, or even not, you are not close to your parents, actually you know what is their biggest worries are. You, you don't need the scientific method to do that. Uh, and probably the only way to get to know what is their biggest worries are, actually is non-scientific, you just have to immerse there and develop basic trust. Uh, and uh, so that kind of immersion is, this is very much an ethnographic virtue that we have to, I think, uh, cherish. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, researchers, scholars must have the confidence to judge. It is, it is a call. Uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is not like uh, whether or not it can be value free and bias. Uh, I, I, I think any meaningful researcher must not be value free. What is a business doing research? want to be value free because you want to intervene. And who's intervening? It's you. Who are you? Of course, you are a historical being. You are born and grow up in a very particular situation. And your understanding is a mind mind, a very small part of the human wisdom. Of course, you are biased. The only business we can do is to explicate how, how biased we are. So make our judgment as sharp as possible and more specific to the moment, right? So, so dare to judge, uh, 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 and even then people will dispute, oh, no, 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 the concern you are talking about is not so important. Doesn't matter. Uh, you, 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 you already review something uh, by, 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 by talk of one even minor concern that the people, uh, 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 people have, and the teenager uh, girls, a concern about the body shape and the beauty. How important is that? We don't, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to, to, to say whether or not it's important, but if you, you, if you tackle that, I mean, that of course is not a new topic, it's quite obvious topic, but, but if you tackle that, and if you tackle deep enough, actually you will get lots of things out from that, right? So the whole society is ordered through this so, as a static, value in a discourse of, you know, everything is supposed to be eco, egalitarian, diverse, and uh, the, 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 we, 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 we embrace everything. But when it comes to body shape and, and the physical beauty, why there's such a pressure there? I mean, so that you, you can have lots of interesting theoretical discussion. So it's in order to, again, I mean, we're not going to abandon theoretical thing. Actually, I think the theory is extremely important to understand the concern, because you have to look at the structure, uh, uh, how 
the sense of you know the, 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 the sense of, of a certainty. Again, of a certainty is not a psychological state. It is the perception of the objective condition. Right? Uh, it, how, how, what it really creates is that, and there's a sense of distortion, a sense of, of, of uh, 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 resentment, and you, you need a lot of theoretical work. Precisely because you cannot drive, uh, you cannot draw any conclusion from what you see as it is. You have to see something behind. And that needs theoretical imagination. And of course, we need a deep understanding with the, of the people just like this. I have one of the questions quite chaotic and trying to put it together for like yeah. the last 10 minutes. It's not working really out at all. So uh, I'll now also link up under pressure and studying what you said about empathy. It's like the building block from which we can like move forward. And so like get ourselves into the shoes of the person who's selling groceries and like trying to get by. And I was thinking like, how can we move the empathy into like an actual like activity that can help ease the pressure on myself and like the other person as well. And what I got to seems like a version of self-sacrifice to a degree. Like let's say that you go in the community or something, like get people who you trust and you don't have to be that much competing from a bit, to be mm -hmm. sure, And you leave something behind, which is like the potential for the economical growth or something like that, like in the most like narrow sense. And I'm getting the post again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so this community, which is sort of like trying to is a pressure that is being posed on you. You can like try to start with a follow up police or some sort. So like don't not participate on the things that you think are like ethical, let's say. But then you get into the competition the pressure in between like the community itself. You sort of can't really avoid and you can feel powerless in the face of particular issues that you can't resolve. You know, if you had like all the power in the world, like the example that comes to mind is the uneven ratio of males and young, young men and women mm -hmm. in China. Like this, like, mm -hmm. like I can imagine myself being there, I'd feel absolutely <laughs> unbearable, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So my question, not to you, like in general, I think mm -hmm. it should be like how to pressure out the pressure that mm -hmm. we get left with after we saw like the yeah. community like isolation and we still you know, like we can function as a more empathetical and so like self-sacrificial living within each other. But then, hopefully, like those big, big questions. And it seems like ideal, like, in, like in a, on paper, you can sort of like sort it out and be like, and think to yourself, oh, I can live without like this or that. Yeah. But then, on the everyday life, it's sort of like needs some building up. And after some time, you can't really think of continuing the down the road. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah, regarding, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, very clear and very good because you're thinking the impact, right? There's so what, and that is the really kind of the line of thinking that we want to promote. You know, it's a, the research is not examining research, I mean, we, are, we make a living from that. But I mean, we do research really as a citizen, as a human being. And so, the, the human being doing things, we have to ask, so what, and why do we do this? Uh, uh, so our, our our purpose is not to solve the problem directly. So when we study like a pressure and sequential, it's not that we try to find a way to um, re reduce the pressure and then to, to stop the addition uh, of suspension or to uh, the nearby is because we don't and we do want to do the same thing. Uh, and uh, like the competition, we, 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 our research is not to find the policy recommendations or techniques to reduce the level of competition. Why? Because the only way to change that situation is the people themselves 
have a new understanding. And so, so they have to find a way. We, we can't, there's a, no way we can find a solution. But we can help. How can we help? We just provide language and perspectives that they can use. They can organize their life experiences in a more orderly way to see the situation in a clearer manner. And this is number two, just based on my own experiences, that is really something I didn't expect. Actually, people do say sometimes just the thinking process itself is tremendous help. They feel so much pressurized right, in life and life. But if they read a essay that talk about how this pressure is organized in society and what is the main cause of pressure and what is the mechanism that you unintendedly participate in the game and you make this worse, they said, I mean, one of the most common comments I received from my writing is that they make them calm. In Chinese, the Xing An, they feel the heart can settle probably just for half an hour, 40 minutes, when I do I go to know. Uh, but I feel that it's something there. The very fact that the people feel that there's a picture with a vision, and I ask, I mean, I ask the people why. I mean, I was surprised in the beginning. Why? Was I, I never expected any psychological of, of this kind of writing. And as they said, the clarity is one, and also they feel reassured that some people are analyzing the situation in a way that resonates with them. They feel reassured. Such a thing exists, such words, such a thinking exists in the world, even though they don't provide any solution. So they feel, I mean, some, I mean, they then with a bit of a kind of tendency they try to praise, but they say they, they just feel the world is safer. They feel the world is safer once they know such a thinking is a possible and and there's no need of solution. But the, the, the solution must come from this. So that's 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 the the uh, uh, then uh, so uh, our job is to to find the languages and the concept will be really useful resonating with the experiences in a direct and powerful way. Okay, there is a last question due to the time stringency, which is online. So uh, can you please a little bit go closer? Because yeah, and please it's uh, yes. Yes, oh. this, this is me. Um, I'm so happy that I have chance to talk to you twice in one month. I'm Nino. We had chance to meet each other uh, online in Bochum. And my question is again um, regarding this, uh, your concept of nearby, because I'm, I'm still thinking and try somehow to to uh, to apply this concept to my own thoughts. And um, if, if I understood you correctly, um, it's not only kind of this physical space, but also we can uh, understand it as a scope of seeing. And this is what I uh, what is interesting for me, somehow to take this concept uh, um, and think with it among migrants, uh, among migrants, uh, what could be for them kind of imaginative nearby, not physical, it could be also, but I'm not interested in this in, in, in this sense of physical spaces, but somehow in, in this imaginative nearby, uh, a com not community, but um, people around you who share your uh, views, who somehow uh, are your near people, close people to you. And I, we talked uh, about this a little bit. Uh, yes. I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, um, about migrants in Germany who are from Georgia and from fr who are from Ukraine and somehow they create now kind of the sense of solidarity and common uh, a common views about past and present and future and uh, they uh, organize kind of events or demonstrations in Germany um, and I tried somehow to apply uh, this concept. Is it because we have in Georgian one word, and this is kind of imaginative space 
of uh, people who are close to you. They, it can, can be uh, relatives, it can be friends, but not only. It can be also strangers who somehow share with you uh, moral views or um, some dramatic event in the past uh, which uh, gets you closer to these people. Can we apply for this nearby or nearness kind of this imaginative as an in, in, imagined nearby, not physical space. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So that is, uh, 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 this is a, a very challenging question, but it's a very, very productive for me. Uh, so, so far, could you repeat it? Because ah, uh, uh, the question is about whether or not the idea of the nearby can be applied in uh, the research aimed at developing uh, solidarity, migrant solidarity, yeah. right? Uh, it's a, 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 a community building uh, with uh, in, in, a, uh, in a new way uh, by incorporating the idea of the nearby. So my understanding is that if uh, the previous understanding of community is very much based on, uh, I mean, the migrant communities also not bounded by physical space we have transnational community but that is based on shared identity or shared agenda but probably the nearby can uh, also bring in more diversity right, into such a community and a solid uh, building um, so therefore it can be a solidarity not based on uh, pre-defined uh, ethos predefined principles predefined or given identities but in the solidarity based on everyday interactions, based on partially shared uh, understanding, uh, based on very rich, uh, multifaceted uh, sociality, social daily interactions, this kind of type of solidarity, if I understand the question correctly. And I think that is a very important uh, uh, question. Uh, and it's important because it's, it's really pushes us to a new level of thinking. So far, the idea of nearby is not a fixed, but a physical. Not a fixed is that, in the sense, the nearby is not legal. Uh, the nearby is that your, I mean, nearby is not a community building in the conventional sense, because the, in the Chinese society, community building is not the issue at all. With all this uh, grassroots organization and the digital technology, and the community to receive lots of funds from the government, precisely, to make sure that the power can penetrate every corner. Uh, so community office now very fancy if you go to big cities in, in China. Um, also e-commerce is very, very key in investing community building. Why? Because shopping malls are no longer making money. What they're making money is e-commerce platform plus community last mile delivery. Uh, so the nearby is, is not a community building. It is about the, 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 your immediate surrounding, and then, then you know, if you take a subway, go to work, and that particular car where you're sitting, it is your nearby. So do pay attention to all these people around you to see how interesting it is. Uh, you have uh, such uh, people behave differently and see any problem in it. Start thinking about it. So I mean, the, your, your office is nearby, or your, your, the, the lobby space in the office building is nearby. So it is not fixed, not the same as a community building uh, in conventional sense, but it is physical because I'm skeptical of the notion of virtual nearby. I mean, you know, you have lots of interest groups and clubs on the virtual space. I mean, then very soon the metaverse will create kind of a nearby that as much as you, you, in way you wish uh, to, to, to make. So you can create a virtual nearby, which is very cozy, make you very happy, but completely unrealistic. And that is a problem. So why physical, the physicality of nearby is so important? Because there's a Chinese saying that your neighbor is not going to move away. <laughs> you can make lots of choices about your life. But I'm afraid it's very difficult to choose your relatives and neighbors. And now social media allow you to run away, and this is wrong. The problem is that you have to face the neighbor you hate. 
can understand why this strange person behaves this way. And you don't have to love him, but just have to observe and see that is a part of life. And you see how to develop the type of social intelligence that you can cope with. That. And uh, so that, I mean, this, again, youngsters get rid of me. This is just this is a type of social intelligence lacking among young people. So this physicality is very important. If we uh, talk about the virtual nearby, that would be uh, 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 what would undermine the entire idea of, of the nearby in the social media uh, uh, time. Then your question push us to think whether or not uh, these two things can be combined together. You know, this kind of uh, the, the nearby, the neighbors who cannot uh, um, uh, we will not move away, so you have to live with. And this is, you can say, is a kind of bottom line type of social communication. But this itself does not allow you to build a, a type of social solidarity that will push for larger change, right? If you want to make a change, a policy change, then you will have to mobilize society on a larger, on a larger scale and also driven by certain clearly identified agenda. And that cannot be achieved by nearby. So now your question is whether or not the nearby can, you know, now it's a very low key uh, a type of, of redressing uh, nearby as, 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 a, as a kind of solution to the problem. And the two, the solidarity building that is to open up a new space uh, for social reform. Uh, if you can say the nearby is a more kind of a negative sense of liberty and empowerment, and then have this uh, uh, more um, positive sense of liberty and empowerment, and make a change, and then you have the nearby of, of uh, keep a distance and, uh, and maintain the basic social fabric. Whether or not these two can combine, I think that because we have not addressed that yet, but I think it's extremely important. And my diagnosis of the current problem is that we are very too much driven by this positive sense of social change, have a big agendas, mobilizations, slogans, but at the same time, our social fabric is a decay. Uh, so we will have lots of unrealistic uh, ideals that only lead to a political polarization. So that therefore, this is the combination of the two can be extremely important for political reasons. And how we do that, I suppose we will, it's not a theoretical project of theoretical building, but theory building, but it must be done through the practical experimentation. So thank you. Mm -hmm. For definitely very inspiring evening, full of new ideas. Uh, thank you all who came here to, uh, to this room and those who are online. If you have more questions, I'm sure that uh, there will be future opportunities to meet and discuss further. So thank you once again to everybody. Thank you.